Hey guys, how's it going? Sean here. So, I've made a preset pack for Reason Studios called Neo Soul. It's a small collection of patches inspired by like hip hop, lo fi, and modern beat tape style productions. All of the presets are available to download in a blog post over on the Reason Studios website, where I did a small interview just kind of describing some of the patches and how I put it together. I'll put a link to that down in the description. I've also made a demo song which highlights some of the sounds. So what I thought I'd do is open up the project file and basically demonstrate some of the patches. All right, so I've got the Ableton session open up here. Let's take a look at this first patch. It's called the Lo-Fi Piano. The core of this sound is this radical piano patch with this drift knob and this EQ here. You can see up the top here, I've got this Lo-Fi machine macro knob. And as you can see, when I turn this down, it turns the drift style down and it also turns the low pass and the high pass filter down. So as I turn it up, you can see that it starts affecting those parameters. This is what the piano sounds like without the lo-fi machine dial turned up. I'll just turn off this echo as well. Now listen to what happens as I turn up this lo-fi machine. You might be able to hear as well in the upper regions, we've got some analog noise. If you open up this audiomatic, you can also see the macro is assigned to the transform and the dry wet as well. So the rest of the patch is just running through some tape saturation using Scream 4, the VHS setting on the audiomatic as well. The echo can be controlled on and off here with this macro control. But another cool thing about this patch is this other echo device, which I'm using as a vibrato. The device is bypassed at the moment. You can turn it on and off using the vibrato button in the combinator. What I'm doing here is I'm running the dry wet balance all the way at 100%. So we're just hearing the affected signal. The feedback is all the way at zero. I'm using the Pulsar LFO. And if we flip the rack around, you can see I'm using this CV output to affect the delay time at a slow amount at about 8%. Basically by using the LFO to adjust that delay time Time up and down we get some slight pitch variations so so this is what it sounds like without the vibrato and here's with the vibrato so next up let's have a look at this noisy keys patch So the keyboard performance is just the same piano take that I did, just dragged down onto a new track. So this is a pretty simple sound. We just have three engines here in Europa. First sound is this kind of rounded off triangle wave. I've got the noise mod just kind of adding some dirt and noise to it. The second oscillator is just a saw triangle wave, again with some noise mod just to add some dirt. And then I have some actual noise as well for the third oscillator. These are all run through a low pass filter. And as you can see here down in the mod matrix, I have envelope one with a really snappy envelope shape affecting the pitch of the two tonal oscillators, oscillators one and two. And I have that assigned to a button up here so you can turn off this neat click at the start. So here's what it sounds like with the click. And without it, so you have the option of a soft sounding patch or a pluckier sounding patch. The three effects can be adjusted here using the macro controls as well. One last thing on this synth patch is this sidechain control here. I basically have this assigned to the LFO2 amount and how much that affects the volume. So at lower settings, we've got no volume automation. But as we turn this up, we get kind of a side chaining style pumping effect. So if you look at the MIDI here in Ableton, if I hit A to bring up our automation, I'm actually automating in that macro control so that the side chain increases as the progression goes on. Next up, we've got this cool atmospheric patch, which I've called noisy pad. 
the patch is made using Europa again. I just have a simple sine wave for oscillator one, a kind of squarish saw wave for uh, oscillator two with some unison and detune added as well. And then I actually have some actual noise again for oscillator three. And I'm using the spectral filter on the resonator setting to add some kind of cool sweeping harmonics so that it's not just static noise. These are all run through a low pass filter. I have the frequency of the filter assigned to the cutoff here in the macro controls. So just have it run through some chorus, some delay and some reverb again. And again, these can all be controlled via the macro controls up here in the combinator. I have independent controls for the noise and the saw level as well. So as you can see here, this noise level adjusts just how much noise is introduced in the mixer here and the same with the saw level. So if you don't want that much noise in the pad, you can actually take it out as well, which is pretty cool. Next up, we've got this cool hip hop lead. As I was putting the song together, it kind of started to have a bit of an atmospheric vibe to it. So this has quite a lot of delay and reverb. So let me just take those off so you can hear what the patch sounds like on its own. For oscillator one, we've got a saw wave. For oscillator two, we kind of have a rounded off square. Again, these are run through a low pass filter with a tiny bit of filter envelope. I've got some very simple macro controls assigned to this. Basically, we've got a vibrato control, portamento on and off, a global filter cutoff, oscillator two levels. So we can blend in how much of the square wave we want. And then I've got on and off buttons for the echo and the reverb again. So here's what it sounds like again. And the last two sounds for these mid-range synths are these pluck sounds. Again, really simple. Oscillator one and two are run through the low pass filter with a snappy filter envelope to give it a plucky sound. Here I have it run through a small bit of EQ and again, some chorus delay and reverb, all of which can be turned on and off up in the combinator. Here's what it sounds like in the track. So in the song, it's just a simple pluck melody, but this patch actually makes a really cool chord patch as well. I have this first pluck layered with this second pluck. So the core of this sound comes from this grain patch where I'm using a sample of kind of like a organic plucked string instrument. And basically I have that run through some chorus delay reverb. And then at the end, I've got some subtle EQ and compression. Here's the two pluck sounds together. Before we go on to the bass sounds, I'll just show you the drums really quickly. So before the main part of the track comes in, we just have this hip hop sub bass that kind of like swells in. Now it sounds a bit weird on its own, but let's have a listen to it with the mid synths and it just kind of like fills out the bottom end right before that drop of the main section. And then when the main part of the track hits, we've got this cool synth bass here. So I've called this patch classic bass. It's kind of inspired by a, you know, a vintage Moog mono synth. For this patch, I'm using the monotone bass synth. For oscillators one and two, I have two saw waves blended together. And the second oscillator is tuned an octave below to just add some kind of sub weight. A lot of the snappiness comes from this filter envelope. It's running through a low pass filter with a really short decay. From here, it's going through some tape saturation using Scream 4 and again using the Audiomatic. And then I have it sent back to this mixer here where I've got an independent control for it. The reason being is I also have this layer that you can add in. So I've also added this Europa with some kind of noisier saw waves, run through some chorus and some reverb to give it some depth. And this is assigned to this layer amount. <laughs> So the rest of the macro controls here are a filter cut off some drive, which adds some pretty cool distortion. This oscillator shape, which just changes one of the oscillators from a saw wave to a square wave. Some global detune and chorus amounts. 
And also this vocoder, which is really cool. A lot of people don't know this, but you can actually use Reason's vocoder as a EQ. Change it from vocoder to EQ, and mess around with these band settings, and you get this pretty cool vocoded kind of digital sound. And this shift control here kind of adjusts, like it kind of sounds like a phase shift throughout the frequencies, which sounds really, really cool. So adding the vocoder and increasing the layer amount can kind of add some different vibe to what otherwise would be like a really simple kind of Moog style patch. So that was all the sounds in the pack that I used in the song. Let's have a listen to everything in the mix. Alright, so that was a quick look at the Neo Soul preset pack that I made for Reason Studios. As I said, these presets are available to download, so if you have a license for Reason 11, you can download the patches at the link in the description below. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and please consider subscribing if you want to see some more content from me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.